Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to the workbench. It's time. The time has come to test. It's all vanquish. It's all vanquish today. Falcon Wild Peaks. VXT2s. Of course, I haven't unmounted those canyon trails yet. Uh, I have this tendency to uh, undo the beadlocks and then get the screws just thrown all everywhere. So I've uh, instead opted, at least today, to go set by set. Oh, yeah. I mean... Man. Oh. Well. Like, you can hear it. They're definitely sticky. I mean, let's let's do the the J concepts stickiness test. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are pretty sticky. The VXT2s appear to me I should have a bigger pair of scissors for this. The VXT2s appear to me to be a bit taller. Oh, you can see the... That is... That is tacky. We will see how that comes... Uh, ooh, they're very sparkly. Uh, we'll see how that affects the all-important, at least to me, mountability stat. The foam seems... Like, the foam comes down far enough that it really pooches out the bead here. Which, uh, more often than not, makes you get a little strip of foam caught inside the beadlock ring. I'm not saying that that's guaranteed to happen. I'm saying that that's, that is indeed what has happened in the past. Vulcan Wild Peaks. Uh, compound feels very, very similar, and as it, well it should. Uh, I, 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 but very different foam, and you can see how the foam is down inside. That's to me, that's a better foam fitment. But I think also worthy of mention. Do they say yeah four seven five four six five? So these are Canyon Trail size. And these are everything else size, uh, whether it's Duratrax or J Concepts or I assume Proline. Yeah, the VXT2 is a is a fair bit bigger of a tire. You can see how much more sidewall there is. Uh, comparing the two just now before they're vented before anything else, they they do as someone had mentioned. The sidewalls are thin, and the sidewall on the Wild Peak is real thin, which is, I think, why it has, there's a almost like a memory foam type foam in there. I'll have those pulled out momentarily. These are really soft, really, really soft. As we're running them on the, the test bed that is Ground Fox Origin, so we, we have a little more continuation of the Vanquish theme. For those unfamiliar with the channel, this is Ground Fox Origin, the, the full cab Vanquish Origin body. But underneath, we've got a Artful Dodgers Ground Fox. Currently running Duratrack Scalers on these bizarre Amazon beadlocks that, like... Here's a plastic 1.9. You'll notice I, I measured the beads when mounting these. They are 2.0s. They are not 2.2s. They are not 1.9s. They are 2.0s. So the benchmarks will be established running this tire set, wheel end tire set. And then we'll switch over to these guys, backseat fourth seas, to see how they do. Honestly, I think the Wild Peaks 
really kind of size wise, scale wise, will probably look the best with the body. But now I've got to go through the arduous process. Oh, yeah. Of having to do eight. Oh, we can do a, uh, we can do the double crumple test. Probably put a little bit of heat on these foams to re-round them. Yeah, completely different foam in the Wild Peaks. Yeah, that is more of a, more of a, like a memory type foam, which makes sense as that sidewall. I did the stretch a minute ago. That sidewall is gummy. So we do a scrunch test here. Very scientific. Oh yeah. Sticky. Should be the same compound for the VXT2s. The VXT2s, honestly, they feel a little sticky-er. Like these have got a real bubblegum feel to them. Just popping out here, the Let's see how long that's gonna take to yeah, they really they really want to stick to themselves. So I'm I'm gonna guess. I'm going to forecast that the the Wild Peaks are going to mount up a little easier because of uh, the foam. The the foam fits a little tighter in. Yeah, there is there is there is no rigidity there. There's no belting, there's no ribbing of any kind in either. Both tires offer about the same amount of side lug, about the same amount of tread depth. They are both non-directional. These are unidirectional tires. Yes, both unidirectional. That's good. Easier for me to mount up. Definitely won't have to heat any of these. They will be, all the tires will be ventilated. Uh, two holes each. We just get the punch up here, pick a spot. That spot becomes 12 o'clock. We can get a little closer look at rubber thickness. Uh, millimeter. These are thin. These are sticky. Uh, we will see. I have uh, no experience with Vanquish tires other than the VXTs that come free when you buy a Phoenix. I used one set. Was not especially wowed by them. Sold those. When I built my straight axle, uh, yeah, that's that's just been sitting over there on the bench since I built the straight axle. So, oh, I need to vent this other hole or I will forget and then I will not do it. I'm just going straight across from the VXT logos to kind of remind myself where they are. Second hole. So that one is vented and now I just have to do seven more. So I will get those vented. I will get these toasted up. Then most importantly, I will get these all pulled off of the wheels. I will get them all installed, and then I will let you know uh, how how does how does the mountability feel for the oh how does mountability feel for these guys? Very sticky. Come on, there we go. All right, we reached the seventy-five percent of the way mark. We have one of each, not mounted. They've been vented and foamed and they've got their rings in and we've got the three each of the rest mounted let us begin with the wild peak mts uh in terms of mountability i thought these were, these were going to be easier because you can see the the bead falls nicely onto the ring there uh, the problem is i guess because of the the shorter sidewall height or how small relatively small the wheel is a uh, tire is uh getting the the rings in like that's that's not in right you can see that there's a bunch of of the like i, I guess on a on a one one tire you'd call it a bead protector the little bit that runs around right here so that's that's kind of in enough for now because you'll you'll see what i do here but you can see when you set the ring on it it it's a zero tolerance affair and then because the rubber because the compound is so sticky getting this thing started without popping the beads off of the lock ring you kind of have to just 
like pull it and then it pops out and then the the beads have stuck to the beadlock ring so it's it's really like trying to mount chewing gum so this guy these fought me quite a lot it probably and then say we're, we're pushing a pooch over there because it's trying to it's trying to slip back out so you got to restart i think on average mounting each one of uh, the wild peaks took about five minutes because it just there's so little tolerance you've got to get the the, the lock ring aligned just right with the faces to get the rubber and it's it's popped up again so i'm having actually a bit, honestly uh let's just call it what it is about the same amount of trouble that i had getting the other three mounted that face isn't quite centered i can feel a little a little bubble on the sidewall because there's more tire on one side than the other you can't really all right we're, we're in but i don't have my holes lined up so i gotta try to rotate okay i think it feels like yep yep, yep there it goes okay i was gonna say it felt like i was enough enough over the lip to to get a bolt into it and i just go i go crisscross i get just i get one thread skip a hole go to the next one try to get try to get one thread i didn't have any bead pops which is not surprising the 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 compound is so soft and the sidewalls are so thin there's nothing really trying to force the bead back out just barely any tension on these enough to get the inner bead over the lock ring and then what you have to do is let's try a little zoom to see it a little better you've got to try to go along the edges uh, did you see that guy pop out there he goes you gotta do that all the way around this one went, this one went okay. Almost around. Get it all out, okay. It's got a little, it's a little squishy mushy, but a big part of that, oh, that's really buried. A big part of that is how soft the sidewalls are. How thin and soft. So once we get it to where it looks pretty even and these for a little while before they uh before they break in from wheeling uh they're gonna have some real wander on the rim they look that guy looks okay we start we cross tighten three and back then i go the other way counterclockwise for the final three wild peak mounted i give these on, on the mountability letter score, I would say a, I'm gonna go with like a B plus because the lock ring is so close to the width. These are a little bit, I mean, they're a fair bit narrower. So it's easy to get the rings to clamp. You don't need helper screws or anything, but it's like trying to pick a combination lock trying to get the, the the inner and outer faces into the beads once they're in the beads it's good but as you can see it takes about five minutes to do each one with no bead b, b plus b plus slash a minus we'll go there so i did the vxt2s second i did the three of those and then I did the three of these and these i thought were going to be more of an issue because you have a little you got the little edge where the foam is coming. It's a lot harder to see on a black beadlock ring. But there's a little pooch of foam coming out right there. And generally, if a beadlock, if a face grabs a hold of a piece of foam, it's not, it doesn't want to lock. You'll get a lot of points of the beads slipping out. But because the sidewalls are so thin, like look at the deflection. Like they're so thin that you just get this guy 
squeaked in there, and then I don't I don't worry about the 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 bead protector yet. I flip to the other side, and then because they're so soft, you just it just drops in. And again, coming back to the uh, these are unconscionably soft. You can just squeeze it with like barely any hand force at all. Get the first one in, and these these just go in. I think it takes about a minute to mount each one of these. There's no there's no bead finagling, and I guess that's because the big, tall, straight sidewall very thin. So again, we've got the, the bead just kind of tucked under. Just kind of pinch it out. And the, the, uh, these I really tuck under because I don't worry about it. The bead is so sticky I can really massage these out. Oh, there's a plug stuck there. And that side is done. Flip it to the front. The front is a little easier to tell when you've got the, the, the bead protector all the way out. And that is all the way out. So even taking my time and exhibiting how easy it is to mount these, these are very easy. These are an A, an absolute A for mounting. They, they could get an A plus were it not for having to go around and and double and triple check your bead protectors to make sure they're all the way out. But I mean, that that sidewall is, there's no, there is no bulge at all. Like Canyon trails have a big bulge. Things like a showdown, as you can see, have a, have a real bulge, which for scale appearance, obviously, obviously you would like less of that bulge but for i want to save my rims if saving your rims is a concern it's not going to take a lot to get that beadlock ring out into trouble i think these actually set in a little more even with the narrower tire and the narrower foam because there's a little there's a little pooch to it i don't i don't i'm not 100% sure why it's just like when they're mounted they fit, they, listen to that. They fit really nicely with the included foams. Both sets do. But these, you can, uh, I can feel right now why that is a, is a, is a stiffer foam. Because it still feels, even with how stiff that foam feels in the hand, when you're deflecting the tire, uh, you can tell why they went with a heavier, something heavier than a medium, more like a memory foam. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a tracks of a TRX4 stock foam. It's kind of that sort of thick, that sort of stiffness. But a, if I can, I can't even pull one out there and there's so tight. A, a Canyon Trail is such a firm tire that these, these are not a firm tire. So, oh yeah, look at that, the baggin. So, oh. I mean, how sticky is your compound? So let us pull a, let's pull a wheel off of the ground fox so we can get a comparative weight to see what's changing. The offsets should be all the same. Let's see how close the weights are. Along with weights, we'll try to get some measurement on these to see how close they, they land to the claimed 4.75 and 4.65. The... Dirtrek Scaler, on the aforementioned, these are 2.0s and not 1.9s. So they're strange. They're oddball wheels. We haven't been able to find another set like them. They're extraordinarily well made. They're just kind of oddballs. Scaler on the oddballs, 195 grams, 194. I've made it known on past videos, I like to shoot for about 200 grams per corner using whatever combination of lightweight rim, heavyweight rim, lightweight tire, whatever, to get in that right about there. Uh, beyond that seems to be a point of diminishing returns. 
Uh, you can go a bit lower, but I think most everything I've got, I've got 2.2 ruptures on carbon fiber wheels, and they're like right at 200 grams each. So 194 for the scaler on the 2.0. The VXT2 on the Hot Storm beadlock. We've got identical beadlocks, just different colors. 160. That is a that is a light tire. That is a light tire. I have a couple others mounted up here. I can throw on the scale for a uh, frame of reference. Like I've got a Jacotson's hunk on an SSD deep clone. 176. A tusk on a deep clone. 167. So we're 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 talking very much very wow and look at the look at the height differential there. It's a pretty tall tire. We'll see how it'll settle down. Uh, I've already forgotten. What is it? 160? 160 grams for those. We would guess the Wild Peaks would be lighter. They feel heavier in my hand. 162. So to really emphasize how thin the bead and the sidewall is on the VXT2. Look at our size differential we're looking at there, width-wise and height-wise, and uh, this weighs more than this. So that's that's pretty light <laughs> for those. I really need to uh, get something a little more official here for uh, measuring tire width. Dead Dirt Tracks Scalar Dead 120. That is 4.75. Dead, like like dead. The line is straight across the mark on the ruler. VXT2. So the ruler moved. Yeah, as I thought. 129 millimeters. Five and one sixteenth inches. So they are indeed bigger than advertised, uh, somewhat significantly, because when I saw this against that, I was like, either these are undersized or these are oversized. So the VXT2 is oversized. Perhaps it's going to squish underweight, but I, I don't know how much. Five and a sixteenth, 129 millimeters. So a bit over what they were announced. Falcon Wild Peak. 118, 118 millimeters, four and five eighths, which is a 4.625 on a 4.65. That's plenty close. That's, that's not, a, that's off by less than an eighth, which means you split the sides. It's a 16th. It's actually a 16th more on either side. That could just come down to the wheel. That's like margin of error. Uh, these guys are just bigger than they <laughs> they're they're bigger than they say they are so we'll be testing a uh, on one rig or maybe more we are testing a, a variety of sizes here going down there in the stair step having not done it yet i think these guys are going to look the best I, I really do uh i i feel like even on a straight axle rig I feel like they might perform the best, but before we get to a rock, I will say I think this tire is probably more suited to a straight axle, and this tire would probably be it would do better on something with portals because I mean we're talking about a good bit like that's that's a fact that's a five inch tire I've got a um uh, mental database, mental database, wall of tires. Where did they go? This is a 2.2 Pitbull Braven Berserker mounted on a real narrow width 2.2 wheel. These are listed on the sidewall as 5.12, five and an eighth. Let's, uh, let's keep our stuff together. So like nominally, Big, big, effectively the same size. Width-wise, eh, the Berserker has got... It's got four millimeters on the width. 
So this, this is a big 1.9. This is up into that 1.9 rupture area big. Will be interesting to see how that goes, particularly in like, say, a side hilling environment. So let me get this stuff pushed out of the way. And we will get this guy prepped up for his round of testing. Now, oh, seeing as we have it out, let's uh, let's look at how light. This is all element underneath, mixed with the ground fox stuff from the builder's kit too. So with the body mounts, 1,528 grams, 3.37 pounds without wheels, body, or battery. Not a lot of extra stuff on there. This is a this is a pretty lightweight vehicle. If we add, I gotta do I gotta do two stacks. That already takes us to five pounds. Body's gonna add another good chunk. Five point seven pounds runs all day on little baby out of frame three S packs. 5.98. So as said, each wheel in the other group is this is how, this is how good my retention is. 30 uh, 32 grams lighter for these guys and 34 grams lighter for those guys. I can do I can do the tear trick. 30, 35 grams for those, one and a quarter ounces. So we're dropping five ounces when we run these. And we are dropping one, two, three, four point six ounces when they run these. And that's unsprung. But I've done some recent experiments with removing unsprung weight. And you know what? Sometimes you can make it work. Uh, wholly unrelated. Uh, I call these Patriots logos. To me, they look like the they look the, like the guy in the Patriots helmet. Against my better judgment, uh, these tires work better with the Patriots logo pointing forward. It's the only part of a dirt track scaler that's directional. If you're interested in uh, dirt track scalers, which why would you be? You're here to see some vanquishes tested. Scaler's a very good tire. This vehicle also on these tires. The owner of this particular vehicle wanted a very specific width. And because the scaler is such a wide tire with so much, like you can see how much bulge comes out over the side, uh, I had to fabricate him custom hexes. That's why they're all very brass. They've been machined down to bring the wheel track in as narrow as possible. Now, will this impact testing? Potentially. Did I mount one the wrong side? I did. Uh, this might impact testing because they will effectively be running a little bit wider. But I think the Wild Peaks will have about the same overall width with the wider offset hub because the narrower tire is not, isn't gonna hit the body. So if I can get these uh, mounted on like say the third try, there we go. Yeah, uh, in the testing of these, uh, apropos of nothing. Uh oh, oh yeah, that was right. Uh, these work significantly better with the point aiming forward. I was looking at these, thinking of that, uh, doing the mounting, I was looking at these and thinking, does it matter which direction they, no, there's there's absolutely no directionality to these. Uh, they're in repeating pairs. It goes little guy, big guy, little guy, big guy. And when you go the other guy, it's little guy, big guy, little guy, big guy. So, to, to, so far as I can tell, they're exactly the same. They are symmetrical. We, we start on these because this is kind of where the established baseline was. We will tackle the usual trio on these, and then we will switch to these, and we'll go back and forth one set to the other. 
on the usual trio, Slick Rock, the Dry Bone Valley angle over with Pink Rock, and then the very steep side hill at Precious Stones, and then we will move out in concentric circles from there. We've got some new stuff to test. We're going to get these guys dirtied up for sure. We're going to see what comes of it as we test a whole lot of Vanquish. I thought about going full Vanquish and testing them on one of my Vanquishes, but this guy, the Scaler is a good tire, but I don't know if it's for his forever tire. I'm really, I'm really anxious to see these on here. So all that's left now is rocks. So let us take all of this apparatus. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pack some stuff up. And uh, the sacrificial chrome wheel nuts have gone on because by the time this is done, they'll have been put on and taken off like 40 times and they just come back in and they go straight in the trash. Because those nylocks, they can't handle this. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's, uh, let's go test these on sticky, wait. Let's go test these sticky friends on some rocks. So here's what we look like on the quote unquote default tire setup, climbing up Slick Rock. And here's what we look like through the meticulous power of editing. The VXT2 is a big, mighty, slab-sided monster. As you can see by that performance, that that, that sticky combo uh, compound really uh, does work, even with the lighter tire. It's just that the interference with that body is probably going to be significant. As I had hoped, I think the Wild Peaks look amazing on the rig. I think the scale of them is about perfect. And performance-wise, it's pretty much what we would expect on a surface that is mostly tire. They're the same compound, so they did about the same. We move next to the right hook at Drybone Valley. The objective here is to stay in between the two big rocks at the bottom. And the further a rig can stay to the left of what we call pink rock, the better that tire is doing at keeping on top of the big bean of a rock at the top. Uh, just try to imagine that there are gates there. The scaler's doing pretty well on the objective there, but tire height and no portals really shows you how rough that is through the center section. And then the, the breach, the final breach up over the top in between pink rock, we, we get stuck, we get stuck a good bit right there, but the scaler keeps it low enough to get them through. Unfortunately, the line shoots a bit wide left so you have to use some reverse. The objective is, of course, to stay off the fence. If you put a wheel up on the fence to maneuver your way through, that's, that's fine. But uh, optimally, we would like to not use a reverse in this situation, and the scalers had to. The understated height of the VXT2 is indeed a double-edged sword that cuts both ways. As you can see, the ground clearance is better. So uh, clearing through the middle section is no problem. 
positioning itself between the big bean and the pink rock, no problem pivoting it around, but the body's getting stuck on stuff a lot. And I really think at this point in the test, this is a tire more suited to something, let's just say not full fender. The Vanquish Falcon Wild Peak, despite being the same pretty much size as the scaler, if not a little shorter, I already can't remember, uh, tackles this with much more aplomb than the scaler. Uh, that sticky compound definitely shows itself here as the Wild Peak does what I would consider to be a slay of that line. It just took it down without issue. And I, I still, I, I think, personal bias, it looks amazing. We move now to the side hill at Precious Stones. The goal here is to stay as effectively low as possible on the side hill. Uh, we use the little ridge in an attempt to keep a wheel hooked above the top of the ridge. And when I have to turn up to stay on the side hill, it's a real indicator of how a tire's sidewall is going to perform. On the first attempt, I, I believe the entry was taken too low. I don't think anyone can pass through that. We're talking about about a 70 degree angle where it falls off. On the second attempt, that was fairly typical of an attempt to run this. Not everyone can clear this evenly. If, a, if an outside tire touches the ground, that doesn't count. You have to try to keep on the side hill. And in this case, the scalers, they did not. The compound and clearance on the VX2 are both better. Uh, breaching onto the obstacle is better. I can feel the tire sticking more, but they are taller than advertised. So side hilling is going to suffer. If you've been running a 465, 475, you're going five inches plus, you're most likely gonna end up in this sort of a situa situation without adding more weight. This vehicle has no knuckle weights or anything of that sort. So these tires, once again, a double-edged sword. It's a very similar situation sometimes, but the, the Wild Peaks drive like they're taller. They clear like they're taller, but the vehicle is not taller. So he stays on just that little bit longer. I think with a couple more attacks, we could get there. But I would say Advantage Wild Peak all the way through up till now. Setting a baseline here on Daphne's other line. We look at notably things like breaching onto that rock, which the rear tires just cleared. And then a terrible entrance line. But also, can the tire direct us to the left? which is where we want to go. We want to go up through this little cut right here, keeping the speed very low. Fortunate the shape of this body because the rear differential is going to get hung up due to clearance issues. So maneuvering through this, but well done scalers. Uh, aside from the tail stand and the little iffy stuff there in the middle, that's pretty much how you want to do this. That's up, that's clear, that's through. The VXT2s will take their run at it next. They are notably taller, as has been mentioned, but I, I don't know if I've mentioned them in this regard. You'd have to go down a tooth or two on the pinion. They are that much taller. Shot too wide, but that is my fault. Going for the same tail stand, trying to manipulate it left. If we can clear, that is going to pull it up. The 
compound is sticky, but it's, it's not that sticky. They are very tall. They are very tall. The Wild Peak is a double-edged sword in the opposite direction from the BXT2. It has advantages and it has disadvantages. Its advantages are brought to, brought to it by the fact that I think it looks better. I think the grip, the traction profile is pretty much the same as the VXT2. But if you're running something with full fenders, it's just a better fitting tire. The problem with that is, it being shorter, it suffers in some areas that the VXT2 does not. It suffers in the opposite, it's a mere opposite of it. So in this, in this particular obstacle, in this round, the, the scaler wins it. The one tire is, this is the, the Goldilocks. We arrive at our final test apparatus of the day, Daphne's other, other line, also known as Daphne's third. It is the final because I think I've gotten a pretty good and mostly unbiased feeling about this, this tire test. And I just, I can't change tires anymore. I, every time you see a line run, I've changed tires. So every single time. So I think I've changed tires 15 times. It's too many. The objective here is to stay inside the point right there. You want to move to the right of that rock where the, where the left front is without the, the wider you go right, the worse. And we've already kind of pushed optimally. You want to be inside. You want to be where, where we basically can't get. It's this breakover right here. It's trying to get that rear tire to pull up over. Sometimes it doesn't work. Let's try it more this way. Scalers almost, scalers almost had it. The VXT2 is tall and it is very soft. It is also very light. It interferes with the body quite a bit because it's taller than it's advertised. And there are things where you can't you can't accomplish everything purely through soft compound. So this is a very difficult line for most rigs to do. Daphne the Sport, a TRX4, with some weight essentially cleared this line on canyon trails, has done it many times on canyon trails, and once famously cleared this line on Boom Racing Hustlers, which I consider to be the worst tire on the face of planet Earth. But some tires, some setups, getting out of that arrowhead is more than they can manage. This does not say anything negative about the dx 2 A lot of rigs, a Portal Phoenix can't make it through this line on J Concepts tusks. So this is a line that is far tougher than it appears as that little bit of a shadow right there in the middle of the frame is completely vertical. So don't let this take anything away from the VXT2 this late in the game. We're just asking a real, real lot of it. And last up, we give the Wild Peaks the last shot at the last test line. And do I want them to make it? I mean, obviously, I've wanted them all to make it. But some lines are too tough for the competition. Scalers couldn't do it. VXT2s couldn't do it. I don't think this is an instance where less tire height is going to be an advantage. Just some weight on the nose, and I think we're there. He, had, he broke over about the same that the VXT2 did. We'll give him one more shot at the opposite line. Can we get out on that point? Not categorically no, but for the time being, I would say no. 
be. It's an ultimate test of breakover right there, and we've lost some breakover as we've gotten a little lower. That tire would just hook at the top, but I think we have too much weight transfer. I could tackle this line for a while on any of the tires and eventually, eventually get it. You can eventually problem solve your way through a line. But here in the closing, you know what? Here in the closing, it's just absolutely too hot here in the sun. The air is cold, the sun is hot. We're gonna sit down on the bench and we are going to, we're gonna talk it out. I have to assume that these experiments should end with something conclusive. It should be just an outright, this is terrible, this is not terrible. And then we go on with our day, right? In a perfect world. I don't think we live in a perfect world. So what is my, what is my takeaway on the VXT2? And the, let me grab them. The Vanquish Falcon Wild Peak. What, what, is there a, is there a buy, do not buy? Well, I'm not gonna say that there's anything absolute. What I will say is that we've got the default tires, which are aftermarket tires. There were our, our test subjects of the day. These guys got tested even though they're not, you know, ostensibly part of the test. They got tested anyway. The amount of stickum on these guys is, is crazy. They're going to be leaving dirt everywhere. So I'm not, I was going to just push these guys off to the side and say, well, ignore that. So to those who have shopped and have been on the internet and to hobby stores, you will know that typically a set of Duratrax is gonna be between 20 and $23 a set. Sometimes $20.99, sometimes $22.99. All the tires here are running the foams that came with them. There's nothing special about the, the foams do in all three cases seem quite well matched to the tire. The solitary issue I would have with either of the Vanquish offerings, so let's move those off to the side for a second, is that it, it comes back again to that Goldilocks proposition. These are a little too big. These might be a little too small. But I can, I can get past that. 4.65 is not tiny, right? That, that's, that's a normal sized, that's a normal sized tire. If these were 4.75, I think I would be quicker to recommend them. I, a, 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 f to me, particularly if you're running something fendered, this is fendered, this, this is fendered. So like something with fenders. If you're running something with fenders, these. If you're running something like this, maybe these, you know? I don't know if I would put these on something with portals. They're just, they're just so tall. They are, they are, are they still five inches tall? They are absolutely still five inches tall. Five inches tall is a bit on the tall side for a 1.9. Particularly if you're trying to fit it in there. This does a lot better of a job in there. You need a little room all the way around. The other question would be, knowing that these are $20, $21, $22 a pair, and these are $30, is that $14 bucks for a full set enough reason to buy these over these? Well, Duratrax calls this a scaler. Says it right there. I mean, in what world? Like, the bulge, the massive, crazy Patriots logo sidewall stuff. That's that's a scale tire. And look at it. it lo that looks like a tire straight off of a 1-1 one, one rig. These aren't far behind. They're a little more, you know, like buggy. But worth the money? 
that all depends. You know, if you pinch, if you squeeze the pennies as tight as I do, where the Canyon Trail stands as still one of my favorite tires because they are so cheap. And I love all the tires from Duratrax. I love Scalers. The Deep Woods is pretty much my favorite crawling tire, hands down. Would I buy a set of these before I bought a set of Deep Woods? I don't know. I mean, for the look, these will be remounted on these wheels and they will be going on that rig because I think that their performance is on par with the scaler, but I think with everything else considered, they just look better. They're, they're nicer looking. So take away from that what you will. Are they bad tires? No. Are they good tires? Yes. Are they the best tires that you can get for $29 a pair? I have no idea. Uh, I would still say for my terrain, where I am, if I'm going to spend, I mean, eh, oh, whew, there's a conundrum. If I was offered this or this, I'm taking this. The, these don't beat tusks, I don't think. Do these beat tusks? No, I'm still going to go tusks. Uh, but they're really good tires. And if you like the look of them, and I am going to try, I am, these will be put into service on Ground Fox Origin. These will be put into service on uh, a little uh, buggy gal I've got here, and we're going to test those out. So they will get a, a lot more wheel time. All of them will have more wheel time. And these will be moved somewhere else. I've been I've been looking forward to testing scalers on other rigs, and now that they're freed up from that rig, I can absolutely do that. So I wish I had something more conclusive to tell you. I, I, really, I really do. I like these. I like these. Are they my favorite tire ever? No. No. They're good. Are they worth $29.99 a pair? I would say sure, because I'll pay... 28 bucks a pair for these, 29 bucks a pair. So they're pretty close in price. And I don't I don't spend that big alien predator money on tires. So I don't have a 40 45 dollar a pair tire to compare it to. I think these are every bit on par with a J Concepts offering give or take a little bit. And they are every bit on par with a Duratrax offering, but I would under I would absolutely unquestionably understand why not everybody runs Duratrax tires. They they're a bit cartoony. But if it's so if it's scale look, then yeah, I, I think I know scale people spend a lot of money on scale stuff. So I really like these tires. I really do. They are going into service. But would I buy another set? The ultimate question. I don't know. That would take more time. That's outside the purview of a quick view. I, I can't tell you because I've heard mention of tearing sidewalls, which I, I imagine is very possible. These are very, very soft and pliable. Durability is not a thing that we talk about here. So their stock foams are good. Six pound rig, probably be great on a five pound rig, probably do fine on a seven pound rig. Uh, the number one qualifying factor for me for a tire is it had better work on its stock foams, especially at $30 a pair. I forgive a Canyon Trail for, for having garbage stock foams because they come from Traxxas and Traxxas sells to bashers. But... You can get a full set of Canyon Trails for $20. So you can put foams in Canyon Trails and the set of Canyon Trails with aftermarket foams still costs less than this, costs less than this, costs less than this. Let's ignore the dollars for, for here. Let's ignore the dollars. Just based on pure performance, Price, not an issue, and price is always an issue. Do I buy another set? I'd probably buy another set of these. 
because I think they look really good. And I think these might be fantastic on like a TRX4, like a Defender or a Bronco. These guys, these guys are out there in the question mark era, area because I don't know. A five inch tall 1.9 that isn't super wide, I don't know. That requires definitely more testing because for this money, I can buy ruptures. See, my brain went right back to money. But in a five inch tall tire, if it's this versus a rupture, I don't know if there's actually a contest there. So I will leave all of you out there in, in the, the followers of Canyon, the Canyon Landers, I will leave all of you out there to make the decision. I think cosmetically, these are the best of the three by far. Uh, I think performance wise, it, it might, it may well have been a wash. So if you really want to have Vanquish on your rig, if you really like the look of these, like I do, they're an option. But at the end of the day, I will come back to the dollars every time and buy more scalers and deep woods. That's just how it is. So make up your own minds, everybody. I hope I showed enough of the performance characteristics of these two guys. Let's let's get these guys out of the way here for the last moment. I think they did really well. They are. I didn't drive through anything wet, so like the stickiness of these is definitely up there. And tires like Canyon Trails and Dirt Tracks don't rely on stickiness. They don't rely on compound. This is a compound tire. So we'll see how long they go. They'll be in service until they're no longer in service. So over time, we will see how they hold up. Are they going to age crack? Are they going to get splits? Are they going to get rips and tears? We'll find out, but I don't think that they're desperately in need of siping or anything out of the package. I think the tread pattern is good. The compound is excellent. Mountability was fantastic. For a drive, good. All of it very good. And I think a $29.99 a pair, good. I give these tires a, a, a unilateral good, but not blown away. They're not smoking hot. They're not ice cold. They're a step above lukewarm. I, uh, and faint praise is like a condemnation. And I don't, I don't want it to be a condemnation. So don't think you're going to get a garbage tire when you get them. Uh, these are in a completely different galaxy from the non-2s, from the just the VXTs that come on like Phoenixes. These both sets annihilate those. There are plenty of bad tires out there, and these are not bad tires. They're just not my favorites, and they're not the best tires I've ever driven. So, there you have it. They do look really good, though. With that, we will put a bow on it, and we will wrap it up. That's it. VXT2 versus Wild Peak. Oh, if I had to pick a winner, uh, I'm going to pick these guys just because they're a more realistic size. If we, if we had to pick one out of the head-to-head, -head, it, it'd be these guys. Thanks for the final time for watching, everybody. Please do comment below with any questions, comments, concerns. Something I might have missed. Was there a test that I should have done and didn't do? I can always do that. And uh, tune in for whatever's next. Go back and watch some old ones. I've got a lot of tire. Man, I love beadlocks and I love testing tires. Give me an excuse. So run with it. Uh, like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you feel like it. Do tune in for the next one. All that, the, the rigmarole for the algorithm. And uh, do your very best in the meantime to have a good one, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.